Okay, it's uh, starting a process now of building a new Shopsmith. So that's my Shopsmith Mark V, 520, which means it was upgraded. And I've bought a new power unit for it to replace this Mark V. I bought the Power Pro, which is much more powerful. As you can see by the edge of the table there, it's, it's got a different type of system on it. It's really a good unit. You can see how shiny the rails are on this thing. That's because they've been taken care of. So what I'm going to do is get parts and build the base, the ends and the four pull, the four tubes. The top ones are a little bit bigger than the bottom ones. They're one and three quarters. The bottom ones are two inch. So I need ends. I need the legs. I need a whole bunch of stuff. So I've been on eBay and bought most of it. But what I didn't find on eBay, I can buy from Shopsmith because they maintain parts for years and years and years. So let's go to outside and take a look at some of the parts I've gotten, the condition of them, they're used, and have to rework, and see what it takes to build a Shopsmith. Basically, it's going to have a 510 table on it, but I can also put the 520 table on it and all the accessories, the bandsaw, the shaper, I think you can see the jigsaw in the background, and then the belt sander, and it's got a lot of other things you can use with it. It's an incredible tool. It's a very good tool. It's not a toy. It's uh, Some people try and put them down and say they don't have a good table saw. Actually, they have one of the best table saws, one of the best band saws. It's a four inch joiner, which is good. And uh, I haven't really used a jigsaw, but we're going to do that because we've got an eight, uh, 11 year old. I should say he will be 11 in the first of December. And he likes to do things, so I'm sure he'll be using that. And he can also use the other shopsmith. And we're going to teach him how to turn wood and saw safely and see if I can make a woodworker out of him. He likes arts and crafts. So let's, let's take a trip outside. Okay, so let's see what we have here. I'm outside. It's a beautiful day here in Gilbert, Arizona. It's the 21st of November, 2018. So what you see in the plastic bubble wrap is are the ends and they're in excellent condition then I bought the ends that go onto these posts these these uh, tubes and as you can see from the rust inside of them these were not well taken care of now I don't know if the guy bought them from was the one that just had them to sell or whatever but these are the lower tubes and if you think they look bad now, you should have seen them before I started using paint remover, navel jelly, steel wool, a grinding wheel, and it took me days because I can only work for 10 to 20 minutes at a time. This is what holds the table and it can raise and lower it and lock it in. Uh, it was in, uh, it was dirty inside, rusty. It's all been cleaned up. It'll, it'll function fine. It'll be waxed. These tubes have been waxed. The upper tubes, I'm pretty sure this unit was used for grinding steel because it's pitted just about where you would do that. And of course the corrosion and rust but it's smooth. Now I've got a coat of Johnson's paste wax on it and it's the first coat so now I'm going to go ahead and sit down and uh, I'll start polishing these up first uh, on camera then I'll just go ahead and finish them up because it's not a if you don't know how to polish tubes I don't know that I could teach you but I'm sure you do so let's put this on the tripod and get going Okay, so I moved some of the stuff out of the way. This is almost like a micro, but just basically I'm just going to work this wax off. It's had plenty of time to dry. And when I get done taking it all off, 
I'm going to put it all back on again. Like I said, I can only stand so long. One of the thousands of <laughs> disabled veterans fighting with the uh, corrupt, criminal-laden Phoenix Veterans Administration here in the Phoenix area. metal doesn't soak in, but the wax does adhere to it. So I'm going to keep doing this, and when I'm done doing this, I'm going to show you. I'm going to have to take some rust off of, I've already cleaned this thing up, but i got to take the rust off of these two pieces down here. So I'll get the cardboard back up here in the navel jelly while these have a chance to dry with the new wax on them again. Okay, so as you can see, I've been taking things apart. I think this would be close enough if I can remember kind of how the angle was. These are the pieces that went right inside here, like so. And uh, they look like this. They're just covered with rust. And I've been putting them in this vise so I don't hurt myself. And then I'm going to sit down in the chair and I'm going to take all the rust off of these things completely. And... Uh, I don't know if I can, that thing is not put in with a set screw, it's been put in almost permanently, so it's going to be something I'm just going to have to scrape clean, I think you can see it hopefully. So anyway, and then I've decided that because the end legs look so good, I'm going to go ahead and strip this completely, this aluminum cast, get all the paint off of it if I can at least get it down to where I have a surface that the paint can bond to. And I'm going to see if I can find a metallic, believe it or not, paint that matches, at least comes close to the legs. And if not, I'll just make it so different that it'll not look like I'm trying to. We'll see how that looks. So, back to the grinding. Okay, I know this is piecemeal. I put on a very thick coat of this Jas Jasco Premium Paint and Epoxy Remover. Uh, I don't really care if I get all the paint off of this. Uh, I'll use a brush and brush this off and then probably steel wool it and then uh, see how that works. All I need to do is get the oxidized, old oxidized paint off the surface and get to a, a surface that I can get my new paint to bond to. So, We'll let this set for about five, ten minutes, and then I'll brush it off. And if that works, I'll probably do the big pieces as well. And then, <laughs> then see if I can find a paint that uh, comes close. And I don't, it doesn't have to be metallic, but boy, those things are sure pretty, I'll tell you. I like to find a metallic, uh, kind of a bluish green. Uh, but I'm blue-green challenged as far as sight. A lot of men are colorblind or have color deficiencies, and blue and green is mine. I had a, my first car was a 49 Ford back in 1950, whatever, seven, I guess, 56, 57. And uh, I later learned that wasn't the color it was at all. <laughs> but I didn't care, it got me around, so. And it loved to eat 55 Chippies. I own Chippies now, so anyway. We'll be back. Okay, so using a copper brush, I was able to, after this is set for about 10 minutes, and this got all of it off. Then I put it in, washed it off with water, because the stuff is water soluble. And I'm down to bare aluminum. And I've dried it off with a towel. I steel wooled it, just to make sure I get all the stuff off. Now the steel wool's <laughs> dirty, but that's okay, because this still just wipes right back off. 
And so what I'll do before I paint it, or prime it even, I'll use this methyl ethyl ketone and wash it with that. That's what it's for, it's a solvent. Nasty crap, I've been working with it since, well, I hate to tell you, the 60s, that beach aircraft as an experimental mechanic after I got out of the Air Force. So anyway, that's it for today. It's the day before Thanksgiving, and we're celebrating. We're having our turkey today and pot pie tomorrow. Or something tomorrow. I don't know what it'll be. So, anyway, stay tuned. There'll be more. Get this crap off. See if I can clean that brush out. Wow. Left it a mess. Ugh. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, it's trying to get a little bit dark, especially back in there, I guess. I can open up the cover and you can kind of see it. So I've got a good first coat on it. I'll have to inspect it, make sure I got everything covered. Very reflective, but it will dry to almost like a satin finish, as you can see. And they're quite I gotta say, they're quite close to this. So I don't know if I will have to sand these a little bit and repaint them, but if I do, I'm all for it because I like the color, I like the little bit of metallic in it. And I think it will be awesome. You can see a little area right there trying to get in between these hinges, which was kind of a pain. But, I think they're going to look good. We'll see. Until tomorrow. Today's the 23rd, by the way. It's Friday. I was off a day. Supervisors out there. Smiling. Kuma, you smiling? And then his sister, Ninja. Come on, Ninja. Come on in. Come on, girl. Oh, wasn't recording. Okay, I've got those two spade. Let's find another one real quick. This color really did a good job of matching the end pieces I ended up with, which makes me quite happy, obviously. doesn't really help much but this is the second coat the first coat did a really good job of coating and covering it Trying to kind of keep them in the sun a little bit. I may have gotten away with just using one can.
here. I'm about ready to start running some of this stuff. I don't want to do that. If I can help it. Yeah, it doesn't look like I can. It looks like it's going to run a little. Okay. This ought to enhance the metallic appeal to it. I would hope. I need to find something to click this on. It dries pretty fast, actually. This just for the hell of it. Okay. That I believe will work. I think that's it. Okie dokies. That's it for today. These will sit all night. And tomorrow, we can start putting this together. Okay, I decided not to paint these. It's just too close. Not worth messing with. So as you can see over there, there's four holes in there now instead of the two. And that's because I've ordered the new uh, wheel sets for these. So they're like three and a half inch instead of the little little ones they had, and they're a lot better. So I took the pattern, <clears throat> excuse me, provided by Shopsmith, and I glued it onto a half a quarter inch aluminum plate, drilled it out, used it as a template, and now I'm going to go ahead and set up and drill these last holes. I've already done that guy over there. So then we're going to start putting some of this together. Why not? Okay, so these are tight enough to hold it in place. Now it's just a matter of drilling some holes. Nothing to it but to do it. Okay, these are just temporary. You'd think, except they kind of bit into the metal just a little bit. May not have even needed the nuts. So. so that takes care of those. Just to keep them together, I'll put these back on. Then I'm going to deburr these new holes. You can tell an old I know I had it in my pocket, but now I don't see it. So I gotta go find my deburr tool. Figure out where I put it down at. Never fails. I went ahead and bonded this into a item, and of course, it's nothing more than just getting in there and just working the burrs off that.
Okay. Now I'm going to clean this off with my handy broom. Get this out of the way. And now go get a piece to put on that guy. This is obviously is one of the easiest things to do. Now, these things vibrate. And I'm thinking I might have the right size here. Lock washers. Hopefully. And I do. And I'm going to use them. Because, like I say, they vibrate. The lathe, especially. Saw not so much. So I'm just snugging these up with my fingers. Of course, these are countersunk fasteners that go into it. They're the same, exact same size as Shopsmith provided new, but instead of being common, they're cross point, which is okay. Actually, I prefer it. If I were the engineer in charge, that's exactly what I would put in it. That'd be a very good job. Clean that crap up. And it's been a while since I was an aircraft mechanic, so seem to have lost my touch, maybe. A little bit.
Okay. Well, I'm here to tell you, I don't think you can get any closer with the color. I just don't. I think it's just about as good as it's going to be. Sorry how we put some of the internal hardware back on it. Hey, come on guys, move. Come on. You're right at my feet. Yeah, big lummox. Now, it's a matter of trying to hold these. And get them to go in at the same time and get into their... this off for a while and then we'll get back to this when we have a little bit more put together. Okay, I've got it pretty well put together. That was no big thing, just putting the screws in, the uh, get the caps on to the legs, use my standard top smith, put this up, adjust it up so it fits tight. And it's done. I'm going to probably wax these things again. They still look kind of cruddy, but that's life. But I am, I'm going to go ahead and put another coat of wax on them. It's come out pretty good. The main table looks really good. I don't know if I can stand it on this if it's wide enough or not, but I'd like to. I think I'll get some help to do that because I've already done more than I should. But I'll get these rails up where I can get to them easier. Anyway, I'm pretty pleased with it. We got her down, I think it's going to look pretty nice. And I know it's going to work. This thing's down, but this has never been a good fit. These things really never go into where they're supposed to go. Unless, oh, I see a problem here. Oh, I see a problem. I may have to adjust. In. It has a screw on this bottom of this one that you can get this row to go down tighter against the bottom, but it's pretty tight. It's just kind of loose here. But it'll function. It's not going to have anything to do with the functionality of it. That's my big word for the day. So, enough for today. Next thing will be to get the rollers in and get them installed and roll it around and bring the other one out and take the Mark V head off of it and put it on this one and put the carriage on it and maybe by that time the 520 or the 510 saw table will be in and I can install it and I'll be done for a while with this anyway so next chapter Okay, just kind of a quick walkabout here. You can see where the tubes go in, how they mount. 
pretty simple. Same on the other end. This piece here, it'll get installed when the motor's on because it goes on afterwards. And of course the wheel system will go on right there on both ends, both sides. And so that's kind of it for now. Like I say, I'm pleased. And uh, kind of looking forward to getting the rest of the parts in so I can finish it up. Well, they're coming to get me. Got to go. Well, isn't life fun? I thought I was videoing. I cleaned this and the other end off. I decided to go ahead and paint it afterward, after all. And uh, this is a 510 device that raises and lowers the table and stuff. And it was a uh, lock onto that table that I already did. And I thought, well, you know, everything else is going to be 510. I've ordered the end table and the other two tables for it and uh, two, two floating tables. I've already got the tubes because of the uh, 520. So I'm making a 510 out of all of this. So I went ahead and painted them. I've cleaned this up, wiped it down with MEK really good, sanded the crap out of it, but it's still got its original paint. So I've put one coat of this rust -Oleum Universal Metallic Paint and Primer, this uh, flat soft iron. And I did the other end already too. So you miss the excitement of me spray painting. <laughs> Boring. And I'm going to wait. I may or may not put a second coat on. It depends on the weather. It's, uh, it was cold yesterday. It got all the way down into the 60s during the daytime, as you can imagine. <laughs> I'm from northern Iowa, so don't even go there. Stationed at Goose Bay, Labrador, so don't go anywhere with any of this. I know cold, and I know snow, and I miss both. Uh, but today it's in the 70s, barely, and so I warmed up the can, because it had been outside, so I warmed it up to a little over 80 degrees, almost 85, and warm water, and uh, I've touched them up, and I'm talking too much, and uh, we'll kind of see what this looks like in a day or two. I should have some more of the hardware come in by then, hopefully. I'm getting excited, because uh, it's just about time to... I should get the rollers in from Shopsmith. They're sending me the ones they forgot to send me the first time. Then I'm going to keep the other rollers and put them on the on the uh, Power Pro set. I'll pay them another fifty-four dollars, whatever it is, for those four. It's I think it's worth it. So we'll see. Okay, so a few days later, Shopsmith uh, sent me the system. And all the parts to it, which I missed. But there they are. I'm going to have to find a man to put these in, I guess. We'll figure something that can get them in there, because I can't. Holy mackerel. I think it started. Now it's just a matter of... to break. Huh. I heard about that with another guy. The frickin' ring decided to come out. Then he couldn't get it back out. So I gotta find me some tools and see if I can close these down a little bit more. Bring me a big old hammer.
Let's see if you can see the, the flange on this rascal. This, uh, that gap is really, really wide. I took it out and used a, a hammer in my, the anvil head on my vise, and I actually closed it. They're even bent a little bit from when they put them on. So I'll bring one in and show you how it's closed, and it fits really well. It's tight. Okay, now I think you can see the difference here. It's really close. I just put one in. I put two of them in for one end, and I'm going to put this one in. And you can see it's easier to get in. Still takes a little bit of force, but. I'm leaving. Okay. But it's down where I can handle it, which is good. I just kind of watch it to make sure it's inserting properly. As you can see the spring here, so it grabs it. It's doing great. So I'm going to let Shawsmith know they need to kind of close those down more. A little bit shoddy. Not real shoddy, but shoddy enough. That one I obviously closed too much. Let's see where it's at. Oh yeah. So I'm going to go open it up just a little bit. It's not going to fall out, but still, I think I can open it up here. Maybe. Maybe not. Anyway, I'm going to take it back in, and then we'll get around to installing these things. Hope I get the lever on the right side. A little entertainment, the kids are back from school, home from school, grandkids, they've got those things going, that John Deere is just not fast enough to catch this guy, those things are awesome, <laughs> this is little, it was for the girl when she was little, Almost all the grandkids have been on that tractor with the wagon pulling one of their siblings. They're playing tag. <clears throat> but boy, does he have an advantage with that monster. Take a shortcut, and that tractor takes two blocks to turn it. <laughs> so anyway, back to this. So Shawsmith was off by five sixteenths of an inch, and I should have used a drill press because by not using a drill press, that one's perfect. But this guy. This thing just tighten itself up. It's off by about a 30 seconds of an inch, but I don't really care. It's uh, <clears throat> it's not going to be a problem because I don't like the idea of the metal being on the on the seam end. Plus, a lot of times I want to level the lathe, and so I'll probably just put a, a piece of uh, one eighth inch. No, oh, the camera just took a trip. Piece of plywood up on top of the on the bottom of the legs. I'm going to make a new template, but here's what I applied. So I'd either a rubber pad glued on here or use plywood when I put it down. But you can see I have a hole underneath each, each of these. So you can see it's in the groove now, everything. I kind of beat this one up a little bit too, but uh, I'm happy. We'll take this off a little bit, roll it around front, and get ready to take the Mark V head off the old machine, my old uh, well, it's a 520, and put it on this guy, which will be a 510, and then pull the Power Pro head out of its box and install it on the other machine, and uh, we'll film that too. So, until then, this kind of ends it for a while. I'm going to remake the template, and uh, I'll, I'll put it on this video so you can see the exact dimensions. The Shawsmith just has it wrong, unfortunately. 
So until then, it won't seem that long, obviously. Okay, I took the Mark V motor off of my Mark V, which is actually a 520, you can see by the carriage, and I installed it on what we're going to call the 510. And I've already powered up the motor a couple times and let it run. I've cut a new template, and now the guy that's going to operate that one is coming out, and he's going to saw off part of the aluminum off that old piece. And then we're going to drill out. I've already got the drill set with a 932nd bit, and I've got it set for depth. And then we're going to go ahead and get busy, and we're going to take the casters off of this guy and replace them with the new ones. Hard, isn't it? Yep, it's good because this one is tall. <laughs> so Connor drilled out the template and I'm going to zoom in on this just for a second here. So I want to show you this is where Shopsmith says the hole should be in there. But it should be a quarter of an inch down. A quarter of an inch down. The distance between the two are the same as the other ones, which is three and three quarter. But if you were looking at a straight line to figure out just where that is, it comes down an inch and a quarter difference between the holes. If you don't, you'll end up with the same thing you have now, just barely getting the wheels exposed. You need that quarter of an inch. If you go 5 sixteenths of an inch, you'll have the problem I have with that one over there, and it's a sixteenth of an inch too low. That's just how close this is, and it don't touch. But I'm going to fix that with putting pieces of board underneath all four of these legs. The real thin ones on this guy, because it works. Actually, this is the one I have a problem with. I'm going to put a thin board underneath them that will make up for that sixteenth of an inch. And it will give me better stability and it will protect the metal from being scratched on the concrete floors. So Connor is busy. <laughs> there he goes. He's getting it. Connor just turned 11. And this is going to be his shop smith. So we're just starting our education. And he's loving it, huh? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> I don't like doing work. This is one of those things you say later in life, well, my grandpa taught me how to do this, and that's why I have this, and now I'm going to teach you. Yeah, that's our job. Okay. Now we're going to paint those new holes, huh? Yay! We've got the new wheels on. That's not a problem. Not on. <laughs> yeah, they're on the thing. They're, that's not all attached to the leg, so is it? So that's next, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I've got the 510 all put together. I had to align the 510 table working underneath it. And I used the uh, 12 inch disc sander, which gives me a little bit more moment on the edges. And it was out. And then putting this one back together, it's got these bolts underneath. You gotta loosen them, then bring them up to this table, the main table and align it. Then you can make put the other cables in. Now there's a lot of different ways to use these tables. I've just got them set up in a basic configuration. We got the casters put on. Put the bolts in the wrong holes, unfortunately. But that's a big thing. <coughs> Excuse me. This may be an accessory you've never seen. And I've got a contact shopsmith. I've got the book for it. I've just never used it, but I think it's going to work okay. But it's a different type of jigsaw than what they have today, obviously. A little bitty table, but you can make a auxiliary table for it. We've used it. It runs good. That's the old motor. And we got the motor stuck on the 520. Put casters on it. Those ends look nasty. The 520 is awesome. I've only got the one table on it, and then the end. So that basically takes care of this. It's basically done. 
and I'm happy with it. Okay, just a note to finish this off. This is my original Mark V, as I said. It's, uh, it shows a little wear and tear, doesn't it? But, this thing down here below is what they call the Easy Lift from Shop Smith. And uh, we put that on on this unit because this head is much heavier than the old Mark V head power unit. What I like about this is you unlock it and it doesn't take any energy at all. And I forgot to lock that. I hope I got this locked. And I'm actually holding it back. And except for the drill press mode. Just that easy. Now if you buy the Mark 7 with the double lift and put the double lift on it, or with the double hinge I guess I should say, you can't have anything down here at all because it's different than this base here. But anyway, that's it. I hope you learned something from it and I hope it was helpful. I'm real pleased. I can't wait to start doing things with this. I've ordered a couple more parts. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get some blue tape and tape the crap out of this and then repaint this end <laughs> so it looks as good as the 510. This is my 520. All of its other parts are still sitting in the uh, garage in a box. We're going to take those out probably later this week or next week. My wife has to go to Utah to be with a granddaughter who's carrying her third child, a boy this time, two girls and a boy, so we're excited about that. So anyway, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please ask. I'm certainly not an expert, but uh, if this video helped you make a conversion, or if you decide to build your own 510 or 520 or just Mark 5, Hey, all the parts are available. And uh, the neat thing about it is you'll know the machine a lot better if you build it yourself than if you just buy one. And the books are all available. You can order them through ShopSmith, every catalog. Well, maybe the exception of that saw. <laughs> they don't seem to even own up to even ever having that. So, But I'm going to send them a picture of it, just out of orneriness, and ask them, where's the support for it? So thanks for watching. Stay safe. These things can hurt you if you don't respect them. <laughs>